<laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Maybe I'll laugh a little too much, right? So, someone said, why are you looking at other people's camera reviews? It's like, well, you don't actually realize that I get a lot of emails from people like, hey, I just saw this. Is this, is this accurate? Can you make a video about this? And I'm like, well, uh, I'm busy doing other things. I was like, okay, I'll watch the video. Of course, I watched it four times. So, there's a new X-H1 camera review out. And uh, um, let's first start off by stating that... Uh, I did review the Sony A9, what, a year or so ago, and even the people that, uh, that knew I don't like Sony said, you know, I, I know you hate Sony, personally, but you actually did a really fair review of the Sony A9, and uh, that's accurate. Um, so let's talk about, not opinions, okay, but actually empirical facts, and what is factually correct, and uh, what is absolutely just off the charts, just... There's just no way in hell that's accurate. Just not my opinion, just factually incorrect about uh, a very popular, I think it's already got like 40,000 views, an XH1 review. And by the way, um, Fujifilm doesn't, you know, I don't get any free camera gear from Fujifilm. I did get a free, couple free uh, hats and t-shirt, but uh, uh, certainly not going to sway my opinion in any way. So let's talk about this XH1 review. By the way, I actually had the XH1 before it came out for use, I actually uh, had to return it. This is my X-H1. People said I got this for free, by the way, this X-H1. It's like, oh, you do so many videos for Fuji. <laughs> this is for Fujifilm. They probably sent you that camera for free. And I'm like, <coughs> I uploaded the receipt of where I bought this from Robert's camera, and I paid full retail for it, just like everybody else. So here, let's examine the hardcore empirical inaccuracies of this uh, supposed or purported uh, video review on the Fujifilm X-H1. Okay, some of these are really off the wall. Uh, statements like, uh, that cool shutter speed dial on the X-H1 only works in full stops. Yeah, and then that's one of your complaints, that the uh, X-H1 shutter speed dial is exactly like every other mechanical shutter speed dial out there. You actually can do partial stops if you uh, assign it to a front or rear command dial which most cameras actually don't have. But yeah, you're absolutely correct, other camera reviewer. The full stops on the shutter speed dial, that, that was a complaint. So the complaint is that the X-H1's shutter speed dial is only in full stops, just like every other camera. Um, okay. This one's a mystery. I'll let you uh, come to the conclusion on this one. The reason why I stopped using the Fujifilm X-T2 is because the lenses are so sharp. <laughs> Um, okay, okay, um, I guess someone doesn't deserve commenting on, by the way, that's not part of this 18-point uh, criteria error. Um, according to uh, this reviewer, which is wholly inaccurate on this, no equivalent 70 to 202.8 and no 85 millimeter F14, excuse me, he said F18, will give you that level of background blur. Well, that's wholly inaccurate. The equivalent lenses are the 50 to 142 2.8, and as I showed when the 56 millimeter 1.2 came out, that the 56 millimeter 1.2 at f1.4, f1.4 looks identical to an f1.8. Uh, so that is absolutely cor absolutely incorrect. Said so that uh, there's no lens for Fujifilm that will give you the exact same level of background blur, and that is wholly inaccurate. It's palpably incorrect. This is a really radical one. By the way, did you notice I have... Oh, you can't see it back here. I actually have, sitting back here... Let me grab it for you. This is a real X-T2 chassis. I took this apart. This was one that got submerged in the water, and it was just totally dead. Here's a, here's a really crazy statement. All of us on our team, apparently more than one person, right? By the way, these are not opinions. I don't care what someone likes or doesn't like. Like, hey, I like Sony, hey, I like Fuji. Who cares, you know? That's great. You like whatever, but, you know, whatever somebody buys or doesn't buy, it certainly doesn't affect me in any way. I mean, who cares? It's cameras, right? It's not cancer and uh, World War III. Um, don't care what anybody likes. We're talking about empirical facts here. All of us on our team, when we picked up the X-H1, which I have here, we all said it feels cheap and plasticky. 
Well, in fact, the X-H1 has a much thicker chassis than the X-T2, and nobody on Earth, other than you, by the way, has said that it feels cheap or plasticky. In fact, Fujifilm, this is, this is the point. Wait for it. Are you ready? Fujifilm is making the toughest cameras today. They're making the best made cameras today. Of all the Fujifilm, I mean, excuse me, of all the YouTube camera viewers out there, I'm the only one that's actually taking a lot of these cameras, certainly not all of them, obviously, taking a lot of these cameras apart and seeing how well they're actually made and designed. Here's a fact, the important fact. The X-H1 magnesium chassis thickness is thicker than that found on the $6,500 Nikon D5. So you, you said, the exact words, let me quote you here, all of us on our team said that the X-H1 felt cheap and plasticky. You know, even people that hate Fujifilm, which I don't care if somebody hates Fujifilm, I mean, who cares? You use whatever you like. There's no one that's saying that stuff. Not only is it, you know, existentially incorrect, I mean, does this feel cheap and plasticky? Well, no way in hell. No. Most of the um, Nikon, other than the new Nikon D850, which is all magnesium, uh, do kind of feel plasticky. However, a lot of that is uh, plastic and uh, usually polycarbonate. But like on the main central body of like the Nikon D7200, uh, it's uh, carbon fiber. Those kind of, you can squeeze them a little bit and they'll give. But no, the X-T2 is the complete opposite of of a cheap and plastic. It's like, well, that's an opinion. It's like, no, it's an empirical fact. This chassis is not only all magnesium like the X-T2, but it's actually thicker than the X-T2, and it's even thicker than the $6,500 Nikon D5. So, um, statements like this. The X-T2 is just more solidly built. Well, there's no complaint on the X-T2, um, but uh, that's, that's incorrect. The uh, X-T2 is not more solidly built. In fact, to uh, account for the new 200 millimeter f2 that's coming out and uh, the larger lenses that came out uh, later on, the heavier lenses, to allow for less flexure between the mount and the actual chassis, uh, well, the sensor that's inside the chassis, the, uh, the frame on the X-H1 uh, has been beefed up. So, X-T2 is more solidly built. There's nothing wrong with the X-T2, but that statement is empirically hardcore incorrect. Um, um, now, this one you might think is opinion-based, and I'm going to get to some other hardcore facts here in a second. It said, uh, the X-T2 feels better in the hand. Well, that depends. We're talking about, like, underwear. Whatever you feel feels the best, that's fine. But the, the fact is that Fujifilm, by their own statement, said they mix, made the X-H1 for people that are, A, transitioning from DSLRs and wanted a DSLR-like grip, or people that were already using Fuji and wanted a DSLR-like grip. The X-T2, I mean, it has a very minor bump on the front for grip without the vertical grip, which I could take this one off the X-H1. So that's people, what people requested from uh, Fujifilm for the X-H1. This statement is uh, wholly incorrect in the extreme hardcore. You cannot go above uh, 24 megapixel with the X mounts. He didn't state that or imply that the X X mount currently is limited to 24 megapixels. That's not what he said. He said you cannot go above the 24 megapixels with the X mounts, meaning for future development. Well, that's not only incorrect, it's absurd, and it's hardcore. It's, it's, it's dead wrong. The X-T3, which is already in manufacturing, I'm, assume, I'm assuming, is a 26 to 28 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. That's absolutely incorrect. There's not a 24 megapixel uh, limit on uh, the X mounts for the uh, Fujifilm uh, crop sensor that goes inside the X mount cameras like the X Pro 2, the X-T2, X-H1. That's absolutely hardcore, just flat out dead wrong. Um, this is also incorrect, hardcore. You can't, these are just hardcore empirical errors, by the way. You can't get that background blur with the X-H1 that you can get with the uh, Sony a7 III because it's full frame. Well, that's 100% wrong. I've adapted hundreds of full frame lenses. And Sony, by the way, is the king of adapted lenses since Sony doesn't really make lenses. They're outsourced and for a long time Sony was not making any lenses. Sony was and still remains to be the king of adapted lenses. Every Sony user is using some sort of damn Canon lens on their Sony. Well, most of them are. It's absolutely incorrect. 
I've mounted hundreds of full frame, I've even mounted with the special adapter medium format lenses on uh, the X-H1 and the X-T2. It says you can't uh, get background blur with the X-H1 that you can't. That's not true also. Here, let me, let me tell you something, girlfriend. Okay, are you listening closely there, other YouTuber? If you stand in the same spot, boom. Let's say I have three cameras here. Crop sensor, full frame, and medium format. If I have one lens, let's just say it's a full frame lens. I'm going to slap it on my crop sensor camera. Same distance. Same lens with my full frame. Same distance. Same lens adapted to the medium format. The background blur is 100% the same. A crop is a crop is a crop and only ever a crop. The only difference between if you're standing with the same spot, with the same damn lens, the only difference is a crop. Nothing changes. Every lens on earth, and this is a hardcore fact, poops out exactly the same light onto the sensor with no regard to the size of the sensor. Background blur given the same distance and the same lens remains absolutely identical. Your statement is hardcore, empirically incorrect in the extreme. Not my opinion, not my belief, not my feeling, a hardcore fact. Um, at the end of the video, actually, I'm going to the end and then I'm going to skip back to the middle. It says, well, my job is to help people buying a camera make educated choices. My job, my job is to help uh, people make educated choices. Well, well, based on hardcore facts and the misstatements made, of which I'm about to list some more, that doesn't seem to be the case. Is that, is that, is that the case? Is that the case? Um, apparently, also a two statement, best shot appears and my battery dies. Um, you, so you're the only person on earth. Now, admittedly, the battery on the X-H1 is smaller. It's the same battery that goes in the X-T2. It's smaller than the battery in the Sony a7 III. Great, Sony's got a huge battery. But apparently you're the only person in the world they can't read a battery indicator on the, on the top screen of the LC, uh, LCD of the X-H1. On the back of the LCD or through the EVF saying, hey, I've only got one bar left. I'm going to take that tiny little battery, which I know it's a huge chore. I, I, I might, I might want to take an extra battery with you. I'm going I'm to be out shooting all day. It's a real burden to pack my camera, but also to pack an additional battery. Now, I know a lot of even the hardcore uh, Fujifilm lovers have said, geez, I wish Fujifilm had uh, included a larger battery in the X-H1. Well, if they did that, they'd have to make the grip bigger and they'd also have to make the vertical battery grip bigger. I've had absolutely no issues, even without the vertical grip and the two additional batteries, of going out and shooting all day long with a spare battery in my pocket. So, I actually find this statement to be uh, disingenuous, fake, and totally unbelievable that someone that is so experienced with cameras has said that they missed their best shot of the day because their battery died. I don't believe that because I believe that anybody, anybody at all with common sense would realize, hey, I've been shooting for many hours now and it seems my battery's on the last bar. What I'm going to do is that while I have some free time here for the next four seconds, I'm going to pop out my battery and pop in a fresh one. So I don't even believe that statement. I find it to be implausible, uh, nonsensical, and wholly unbelievable. Um, here's another one that's uh, totally incorrect. Uh, the uh, X-T2 has an analog exposure compensation dial, which it does, and the X-H1 uh, the X, uh, doesn't. Well, actually it does. The top LCD screen was actually replaced with the exposure compensation dial to allow for video use so people actually got the LCD screen out. You're able to see and actually personalize the information on the top LCD, but there still is a manual exposure compensation dial. You can either set it front or rear command dial. The only difference is the exposure compensation moved from here to here. And that is, yeah, that's a manual dial. Let me check again. Let me ask you a question. Is that a manual dial? You know, this, this actual physical button that makes clicking sound? Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely every manual dial for the X-H1 is present on the X-T2 is also available for the X-H1, including the exposure compensation dial. So that statement is totally incorrect. For sports, I'd rather have a Nikon D500, which is faster. Well, I have a couple Nikon D500s. Um, autofocus speed is not governed solely by the camera. It's also governed by the lens. Isn't that interesting? I guess take the fastest camera in the world. Let's just say Nikon D5, Nikon D500. I guess take a slow-ass old screw drive autofocus lens on there 
and it's still going to be slow. So when we talk about autofocus speed tracking and acquisition, we cannot simply be talking about camera. We also have to talk about lens, whether that lens is a linear drive, a stepper motor, um, a screw drive, a silent wave motor, an AFS motor, a micro, uh, a micro, I mean, it's called a, a mini, uh, mini, uh, it's a mini AFS motor, which is actually a micro motor, has four uh, nylon gears. So that statement is incorrect. By the way, I tested the X-T2. Autofocus tracking and acquisition is not only improved with the new firmware on the X-T2, about to come out in two weeks for the X-H1, but it's already faster than the Nikon D500 using equivalent lenses, so that statement is incorrect. Love the Nikon D500. Its huge buffer due to those XQD, XQD cards is absolutely undeniable, but it is not faster for autofocus, given the same type of uh, silent wave motor um, between the two. No. We're talking about the actually fastest linear motor, like the 80 millimeter. Um, well, that's actually a linear motor and ceramic ball, but like the 90 millimeter, which is quad linear rail motors, it's, it's faster than any lens that you could choose to stick on the Nikon D500. So that statement is wholly incorrect. Um, this statement is uh, wholly incorrect. Uh, this confuses resolution or conflates resolution with uh, pixel pitch. Statement that if you want to get a high resolution camera, you can get that with the A7R3. You can't get that with the Fuji or the Fuji X-H1. Well, this conflates megapixels with uh, pixel pitch. Uh, so here's a question for you and why this uh, reviewer is incorrect. Which do you think has more translational information for a square millimeter of sensor, the 42 megapixel A7R3 or the 24 megapixel X-H1 slash X-T2? Well, the answer is actually the X-T2 X-H1. You see, this is where people confuse. Like take the D850, for example. Well, that's a 47 megapixel camera, essentially. Versus the Nikon D500, which is a 20 megapixel camera. So which one has more resolution? Per millimeter of sensor, there's more information on both of them. Both of them are identical. What, 47 megapixel Nikon D850 versus a 20 megapixel Nikon D500? Correct. The 850 in crop mode is a 20 megapixel camera. The A7R3, by the way, is 4.51 micrometers pixel pitch. The uh, X-H1, X-T2 is 3.93. While the difference is negligible to a fault that you won't find any difference, there's actually more information per millimeter of sensor for croppability on the uh, X-H1, X-T2 than there is on the, uh, the Sony A7R3. That's just an empirical fact. So when you talk about high resolution, you need to be specific because this conflates incorrectly, I might add, megapixels with pixel pitch. Amount of megapixels is one thing, but the amount of information per millimeter of sensor is something totally different, and that's what's confused. Now, you might think that this is an opinion statement, but it's actually, I'll talk about it in a second to here, an incorrect statement. It says the touch screen absolutely sucks. It just sucks on the X-H1. It's like, well, that's totally opinion. Well, let's examine this a little further. This person has actually reviewed a lot of Sony cameras, and he always says that the touchscreen, as well as everybody else, says the touchscreen sucks on the Sonys. Even people that love Sony says the touchscreen sucks. Here's something else that I've noticed that a lot of other people don't do correctly that don't actually get into the camera menus and realize what the camera is capable of. There are actually zones on the LCD screen, so if you have your face at the back of the camera and your nose is touching it, there's zones you could actually set if you have the default, which is the entire screen for touch, then the uh, touch screen is going to suck because the camera doesn't know the difference between your damn finger and the tip of your frigging nose. So if I use this camera straight out of default, which is what I'm assuming what was done, and you put your face up against the screen, whether you're left eye or right eye dominant, your nose is going to be touching the screen. Your camera is not going to have a confusing time choosing between your finger and your nose because it doesn't know the difference. The touch screen actually, and I have had a chance to play with the A7 III, I am going to do a full test on when I get my hands on one for a couple weeks. The touchscreen is better on the Fuji than it is on the A7 III. A7 III, $2,000, great. Great, wonderful camera, fine, but you can't say the touchscreen is better, nor that the touchscreen sucks. So you think this touchscreen sucks on the X-H1? Well, all these uh, Sony reviewers that absolutely love Sony seem to agree that the uh, touchscreen absolutely sucks on the Sony. The best I've actually seen is uh, Panasonic and uh, Canon's touchscreen on the M5 uh, Canon, actually, which is a crummy camera with that many lens selection. But, uh, so that statement's incorrect. Um, you say that there's no big glass for wildlife for the X-H1, so that's one of your deciding factors on trashing the X-H1. Well, where the hell is the big-ass glass for wildlife for Sony? We're not talking about Canon and Nikon here with a big 600 millimeter f4, which I happen to have, by the way. 
you know, the huge ass wildlife lens, lenses do not exist for Sony. It's kind of like, uh, this would be like uh, picking on your neighbor for having one blind eye when you yourself are blind. So, so you know, so the reason, the reason to tout the Sony over the Fuji is that it has no huge uh, wildlife lenses. Well, there's no huge wildlife lenses for the Sony either. <laughs> Um, um, here's a statement that's wholly incorrect. It says that you should get another camera with a bigger sensor. Well, that's a matter of opinion, but where's the error in this? And that, that camera is the Sony a7 III. Well, like I say, you should get another camera with a much bigger sensor than the a7 III. That would be the GFX. I know for sports action wildlife, I know the eye autofocus because I've tested it on the Sony a7 III, and I tested it when I did a full review on the Sony a9. Sony has the eye autofocus nailed. I also pointed out something very specifically to people, is that there's already four reviewers out there that are showing overheating on the new Sony a7 III. It's like, yeah, but it took like a half an hour or 50 minutes to overheat. And then I will, in return, point out to them, it's like, yeah, but that was done inside their living room. There are all these living room tests of the Sony a7 III. I said, it's over. It's like, well, it took a long time to overheat. Yeah, but how much faster do you think it would overheat outside in real-world conditions? These people were testing it inside their 72-degree living rooms. But that's about the Sony a7 III. What camera you buy or don't buy, obviously I don't care, but what about these factually, factually incorrect and empirical uh, nonsense statements said about the X-H1, which are just, not my opinion, wholly incorrect? Um, uh, the big Another statement here. Big disadvantage, if you're switching from DSLR to X-H1, Look at this toy battery. So he, he uh, enunciates that this is a toy battery. You have to run out in the middle of the day, leaving you hanging. You're going to run out in the middle of the day. There's not a single professional photographer in the world, including an amateur photographer with 10 brain cells, that's going to know, I'm, like, I'm going to take this camera out, I'm going to shoot the piss out of it today. You know, and they don't have the vertical grip. Any, by the way, now I know I use the vertical grip, and then people say, well, you know, it's more money, and you know, it's hip bigger and heavier. That's true. I have shot the piss out of this camera and testing it with these three batteries. I haven't even come close to sapping more than 40% of the totality off of these three batteries. But there's not a single photographer on earth with 10 brain cells that's going to go out with the camera only and the one battery is like, I'm going to shoot, you know, I'm going to shoot most of the day. Okay, so the big hindrance for you is that you're going to call this a toy battery. You can't stick another one of these in your pocket. I know a lot of Fujifilm users, you know, wanted a bigger battery, but we've already stated why that's not the case. It would have made it for a much bigger camera, made the vertical grip bigger, and then people said, well, we wanted this DSLR size camera, but we didn't need this big honking. Yeah, well, if you wanted a bigger battery, that would have had to been the necessitative case. But these statements are wholly incorrect. I'm still trying to figure out the one that everybody asked me about. It says, the reason why I stopped using the Fujifilm X-T2 is because the lenses are so sharp. Well, <laughs> Sounds like a, a chef complaining about his knives being too sharp and they're doing too, too, too good of a job cutting the vegetables and pork up. Doesn't uh, make any logical sense or connection there. Um, there are equivalent lenses, the 7200 and the 85mm 1.8. So that statement is wholly incorrect. That's the 56mm 1.2 and the 50-140 to 140 at 2.8. X-T2 is more solidly built. Just the opposite is the case, girlfriend. Just the opposite. You cannot go above 24 megapixels with the X mount. This will, uh, I think it, the, the statement after this was, this will limit your future choices or something. Along. Well, that's not the case. The X-T3 is coming out with uh, well above 24 megapixels. 24 megapixels is not a limit, especially when you consider backside illuminated sensors. You're actually able to make the photo sites smaller and they have the same gain because the BSI uh, infrastructure on the actual layering of the sensor has a better SNR per unit of time, therefore you're actually able to make tinier, tinier photo sites. Can't get the background blur with the X-H1 that you can with a, a full frame like the Sony A7. That is 110% hardcore, incorrect in the extreme. A crop is a crop is a crop. I don't know why people don't get this. Every lens on earth, without any exception, no exceptions exist, they all crap out the exact same type of light Period. With no justification for any change or discrepancy regarding the size of the sensor that's underneath them. A crop is a crop and only ever a crop. Everybody keeps making these statements. I have no idea why a huge photography channel keeps making these statements. You know, my question is, is that uh, 
Why do you keep saying stuff like that? We're not talking about what someone... You know, this video is not personal. People, uh, I hate to say this, but stupid people are going to think this video is personal. This is not personal. This is about facts versus opinions. These statements made about the XH1, and like I said, who gives a damn what camera you like? These statements made about the XH1 are wholly incorrect. They are in error. They cannot be processed as factual statements because they are completely incorrect. You know, it's like one of those sci-fi movies where they input some nonsense into a computer and the computer goes, cannot compute, makes no sense. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not correct. One and one don't equal four, you know? Violets are beautiful. My why, my, my, my dog is lovely, you know? I love sunset. You know, all of these are opinions and they're all valid. You are entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own set of facts. That's just the way the ball bounces. So, there's the XH1 review of the review. Mm. It's just, it's just not correct. I, I, I really find it funny that the XH1 only works in full stops in the shutter speed dial. What, what, you mean like every other camera made? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. That's like saying, oh, you got one of those damn cars that has four tires. That's like, you mean like your car and every other damn car on the road? <laughs> you know, I hate that car you drive because it's only got four, it's got four tires. <laughs> As opposed to what? You know, every car on the road, essentially, has a four tire. You know, at... <laughs> If you just hate the camera, just say you hate the camera, but don't make incorrect statements about the facts. You feel me on that one? Does that compute? This is not a personal video. People say, you know, this video doesn't seem to make much sense. It's like, you're right. It's because there's a lot of errors inside of it. Nobody's perfect. No camera is perfect. This goes without saying. Anybody with 10 brain cells knows that everybody else knows it with 10 brain cells. Nobody's perfect and no camera is perfect, but uh, these statements are just ridiculous. They are incorrect. Thank you so much for watching. You have a lovely weekend. Yeah. Go out and shoot your Sony or Fuji, whatever the hell it is. I've been out shooting today. I had to take a shower. I was sweaty. Yeah, fat, sweaty guy, right? Stereotype, fat, sweaty guy. Thanks. Bye.